If you've ever found a bird's nest, you will have discovered that they are each the finest detail and comfort in mind. And what's more, they've been fashioned by an animal that has no hands, constructed purely with their beak and feet alone. Now that's clever. The parents chose to nest on this 400-foot pinnacle. From the nest designed to attract a mate, to the one built by both the male and female bird to house their young or in his new mate. Yes, it's the male's job to build this intricate nest during mating season to attract a prospective partner. Unusual, I know. But the weaver bird completes the basic structure, and once approved by the female, she will help him to complete it. It's a very complicated scenario, and so too is the nest. It is also a very lengthy process as weaver birds start nesting in August and stop building nests in February. I bet the poor guys are keen for a break come March. The nest is a sophisticated structure that starts off with the bird making a knot with a long blade of grass. He then creates a circular structure weaving strips of grass, leaves, twigs, and roots using his beak and feet until he ends up with a ball-shaped nest that hangs from the tree. His strong, conical beak helps him to cut the materials required, and with help from his feet, the weaver can tie real knots in the nest material, making it more secure. And not only is he clever and resourceful, he's also fast, completing a nest in just two days. The nest is said to be 100% waterproof and survive violent storms. So this guy definitely has talent, don't you think? Building activities of hammer cops in central Mali are fascinating. Not only are they a massive undertaking, but they're constructed by both members of the pair. Just like us humans, they communicate with each other throughout the build to ensure it's completed to their specific requirements. The female is said to spend the most time on the nest, with most activity occurring during the early morning. The huge enclosed structures are built all year round and can easily accommodate a human being. Each pair may build up to five nests a year. They occupy them for relatively short periods and can return to a previously occupied nest or renovate an old one. The nest height varies depending on the suitability of the site and the entrance hole direction is dependent on the tree's position. A distinctive and legendary mystery bird with brown plumage and a hammer shaped head, the hammer cop is widespread in Africa. It is considered a bad omen associated with lightning, leprosy, and even death. So it might to see why the hummingbird's nest is so pretty. This beautiful little nest is built entirely by the female bird, with her tastes quite obvious in its design and creation. The male plays barely any role at all aside from mating. They have no part in choosing the nesting site, gathering the materials to build it, or raising the chicks once they are born. A fine example of an absent father, the male hummingbird has it pretty easy. The female, on the other hand, prior to hatching her eggs, spends several hours a day for up to seven days collecting materials for her well-considered nest. She hunts out bits of moss and lichen, plant down from thistles, dandelions or cattails, spider silk, cotton fibers, small bits of bark or leaves, feathers, fuzz, and fur. The solo mom weaves the materials together into a dense cup that appears to be decorated. This acts as a camouflage from the world, and the result is quite spectacular. She's a clever little bird, too. The nest is designed specifically to protect the eggs from tipping in high winds, and the spider silk that binds it together gives it elasticity to enlarge as her little ones grow. The female hummingbird is a hard worker, but she's also the largest bird's nests in the world was built by a pair of bald eagles, and possibly refurbished by its successors. The nest, located near St. Petersburg, Florida, USA, measured a whopping 2.9 meters wide and 6 meters deep. Not only that, but this nest weighed more than two tons. It must have been one enormous tree to cope with that monster. It was examined in 1963 and was found to be a genuine bird-created nest. The male and female eagles build the nest together, with both gathering materials for its structure, arranging them together, and bonding while doing so. Unlike other birds, adult bald eagles may continue to use the same nest each year, adding one to two feet of new material to the old structure. Eagles will return to the same nest and nesting 
adjusting territory each year if they successfully produce young at a nest. If their previous nest was unproductive and the pair decides to build a new one, the process begins one to three months prior to mating and is considered an important part of the breeding process. Every material is considered for the nest's design. Interwoven sticks create a solid structure and the interior is lined with grass, corn stalks, and other soft materials to ensure the comfort of their young. Moss is included and may serve as an insect repellent. What an ingenious addition from mom and middle bird's nest can be eaten. Not only does this make it eco-friendly, it's probably pretty handy when mom and her babies are hungry. The nest looks very cozy and is a common sight in the Andaman situated in the Bay of Bengal between India to the west and Myanmar to the north and east. A tiny bird that measures just 12 centimeters long and weighs about 18 grams, the swiftlet and the glossy swiftlet live in the limestone caves of Andaman. Nesting deep within the caves and other poorly lit areas, the swiftlets use echolocation location for navigation with sound waves as they bounce off the surface. Their nesting locations are chosen to ensure they are safe from natural predators, and due to their size, these guys are prey to pretty much any creature or animal bigger than them, including bats, cats, and rats. They build nests that can be eaten by humans and are considered a rare delicacy in Chinese cuisine. The fact that they are built out of the bird's solidified saliva would be enough to put me off, but others aren't so bothered. When exposed to sunlight, the white nest gets a golden hue, often referred to as white gold. It's also priced like it, at a whopping $4,000 per kilogram. Now, the biggest predator for the edible nest swiftlet are humans, and the bird has been added to the endangered species. List. Colorful birds burrow into the sides of sandy banks, preferably near river shores, and usually at the beginning of May. Similar to rabbits, the bee eater creates a relatively long tunnel in which they lay five to eight eggs. Both the male and female care for the eggs, feeding and roosting as a couple. They look after their brood for about three weeks. During courtship, the male bee eater finds and delivers food to the female, feeding her large items and eating the small ones himself. They primarily feed on insects, especially bees, wasps, and hornets, removing the sting before consumption. The male steps up his game before and during egg laying, making sure his mate is well fed. As most males are monogamous and prefer just the one partner, they are very attentive. The bee eaters breed in warmer climates, including southern Europe and parts of North Africa and Western Asia. They are strongly migratory, spending when most every other bird on the planet, including their close relatives relative, the weaver, the sociable weaver uses and maintains its nests right throughout the year. Their colonies can be as small as 10 or as large as 500, and their nests are found at phenomenal heights. In fact, from a distance, they look like small haystacks stuck up a tree or telephone pole. An impressive sight they must take a ton of work to create. Not only that, the sociable weaver does all the work, and other birds get to enjoy the benefits. Yeah, they are community nests providing shelter and shade for a wide range of birds and other fauna. At Tswalu Kalahari Private Game Reserve in South Africa, for example, it was discovered that a large number of fauna, including paper wasps, took advantage of the sociable weaver's nest chambers. The paper wasps build their nest under the weavers, and other birds, like the acacia pied barbet, ashy tit, and red-headed finch, roost rent-free in them. Baboons and slender mongoose use them as sites for foraging, and wild cats such as leopards and cheetahs often take refuge in them or use them to get a better view of the surrounding landscape. These massive thatch-like nests endure for many years and are large enough to house over a hundred pairs of birds spanning several generations at a time. Now, fuller to an intricately designed floating raft, the horned coot's nest is built to withstand the often changing environments sitting on water can deliver. But this time, there is a nasty surprise. A rare species of bird found at lakes in the northwest of Argentina, southwest of Bolivia, and northeastern Chile, the horned coot's living quarters are almost always restricted to altitudes of 3,000 to 5,200 meters above sea level. Like the European bee eater, the horned coot is monogamous and sometimes breeds in colonies of up to 80 pairs. The male of the species are a little larger than the female on average, with a total length of up to 
62 centimeters and a reported body mass of around 2 kilograms. They build huge nests that are typically made from pebbles piled high to form an artificial island. This island reaches the water surface and is normally located about 40 meters from the shore of the lakes where they breed. It is covered with algae to form the nest and, due to the amount of pebbles used, could weigh as much as 1.5 tons. That's a hefty nest. The horned coot breeds from November to January and refurbishes its living quarters each season. Number 7. Jer Falcon Falco rusticulus. These birds make life difficult for predators looking for an easy meal, that's for sure. The jur falcon typically nests on cliff edges or in conifer tree nests of other species, such as common ravens and golden eagles. Both males and females visit several different cliff faces and trees before deciding on a suitable destination to begin breeding. Their nests are quite basic in comparison to others and can range from bare or debris-covered soil to a structure of dead sticks, usually with little or no lining. The jur falcon doesn't build the nest itself, however, both male and female do add their contribution by scraping a hollow depression in the center of an already constructed one. These birds typically breed in arctic and alpine tundra in northern Canada and Alaska, where trees aren't a common sight. In these areas, there is an abundance of nesting seabirds or waterfowl, whose habitats include rocky sea coasts, offshore islands, river and lake bluffs, and mountainous terrain. The low vegetation in their habitat includes species of sedge, cotton grass, lichen, moss, willow, and birch, which is why their nests are so basic. Jer falcons rely heavily on willow ptarmigan and rock ptarmigan, but also hunt other birds, including seabirds, waterfowl, shorebirds, and songbirds, and mammals such as hares, ground squirrels, lemmings, and young arctic fox. Number 6. Little Grebe The smallest European member of the grebe family of water birds, the little grebe, also known as the dab chick, is commonly found in open bodies of water. An excellent swimmer and diver, the little bird measures on average just 10 inches in length. It pursues fish and aquatic invertebrate prey underwater, skillfully using the surrounding vegetation to hide. Like all grebes, it breeds in small colonies and nests at the water's edge. The nest sits on a floating platform of vegetation concealed with additional foliage. Unfortunately, it is vulnerable to fluctuations in water levels, either flooding following heavy rain or being left stranded in drought. The little bird usually lays between four to seven eggs, hiding them from predators when leaving the nest to find food. Soon after hatching, chicks are able to leave the nest and are often carried on the backs of swimming adults. They normally breed during the rainy season in heavily vegetated areas of freshwater lakes across Europe, much of Asia, down to New Guinea, and most of Africa. Outside of breeding season, most grebes move into more open water, occasionally appearing on the coast in small bays. Number 5. Common Tailor Bird when it comes to nests, not all are created equal. While most are built from twigs and dry grass, others are made from mud or set amongst stones. But the common tailor bird has a truly unique nest. This small bird lives in the tropical ecosystems of Asia and, just like its name suggests, it is a tailor of sorts. It sews a sturdy nest together from leaves and spider webs, fine grass or plant fibers, and it's rather an impressive sight. The edges of a large leaf are pierced and sewn together to make a cradle in which the actual grass nest is built. In here, the tailor bird raises a family of baby birds. Usually brightly colored with green or gray upper parts and yellow, white, or gray underparts, the tailor bird is a small bird with short, rounded wings, a short tail, strong legs, and a long, curved bill. They often have chestnut on the head and are typically found in open woodland. Scrupulous and unmistakable bird, the African jacana has long legs, a blue bill, chestnut underparts with black wingtips, and is part of the wader family. The female is larger than the male and has multiple mates, with the male left alone to look after any offspring. A slightly different scenario than most breeds, that's for sure. This system has evolved due to a combination of two factors. The lakes they live on are rich in resources, meaning the energy required by the female in producing each egg is minimal, and the eggs can be equally well incubated by a parent of either gender. Now isn't that handy? 
Dad incubates the eggs and, once the chicks are born, he carries them under his wings to keep them warm and dry until they are almost three weeks old. They breed throughout sub-Saharan Africa, laying brown, glossy eggs with irregular black markings in a nest that is created to float on water. A simple structure made from aquatic vegetation, the nest is partially submerged if close to the water's edge, and if in deeper water, it sits on a small, floating, raft-like creation. Woodpecker live in forests or woodland habitats. The bright and colorful little birds are well known for their characteristic behavior, foraging for food on the trunks and branches of trees and communicating by drumming with their beak. This sound can be heard from some distance away, so it's quite the effective communication tool. The woodpecker mostly nests and roosts in holes that the male of the species excavates, with help from the female who may tap around it to signal her approval. Dead trees or dead parts of live trees are chosen as suitable nesting sites, and both partners build the nest from straw, grass, feathers, and bits of bark. These materials are wound around and shaped with the breast of the bird until all the strands are intertwined and feathers are strategically placed in the bowl of the nest. The nests are abandoned when they are no longer needed and other cavity nesting birds take up residence in them. There are about 200 different species of woodpeckers in the world. However, they do not live in extreme polar regions or Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea, or Madagascar. Like the woodpecker, the great hornbill nests in tree cavities or rock crevasses, the only difference being that they are almost sealed shut except for a narrow vertical slit. It may seem unusual, but when waiting for their chicks to hatch, the female is sealed inside the nest to protect both her and the the babies. The opening to the cavity is wide enough to pass food through, but narrow enough to seal out potential predators such as monkeys, raptors, and other predators that feed on eggs and young birds. Although the great hornbill is a large bird, more than capable of building its own nest, it regularly takes up residence in one vacated by a woodpecker that has been enlarged by fungus. Once the fussy female has agreed on her accommodation and made herself comfortable, the male sets about making improvements. He brings lumps of soil moistened with his saliva and sometimes mixed with droppings, chewed wood, and bark. Together, the pair build a wall of mud, he from the outside and she from the inside. Once the wall is complete, the female is trapped inside the nest with only a small hole to the outside world through which she can obtain food and communicate. She obviously doesn't suffer from claustrophobia, that's for sure.